All right, W Fighter here. We're interviewing live from Vegas at the end. We're like the, the last people here at G2 Fight Summit, Women's Fight Gym Summit with Janet Martin. Start Black off guy. by asking how you really got into um, coming up to the forefront of women's MMA and really uh, sort of leading the way as a big supporter. Like, wh what's the progression? How you got to this point? Oh, there was a couple steps along the way in the journey. Um, initially, I became involved in training in amateur Muay Thai. And from that experience, I was doing research on the internet and started realizing that women's MMA, women in martial arts in general, was uh, underrepresented um, and sometimes even neglected. So kind of taking that in mind and an opportunity arose in our, in our area in North Carolina for me to partner up with Black Eye Promotions and help uh, bring uh, pro women's MMA fights to, to his uh, June event at Black Eye. And uh, we had great success. We had great female fights. And uh, so I'm continuing my work with Black Eye Promotions and Scott Crosby to really promote and create a home for women's MMA uh, at Black Eye. Yeah. When you said you were a fan before too of women's MMA, even before your Muay Thai training, mm -hmm. uh, why don't you tell me like when you started becoming a fan and what initially sort of brought you? Well, into it? Um, it, it goes back to when I was a kid. Uh, I'm a fan of combat sports. My brother wrestled. Uh, we always had boxing on when it was on TV. We all sat down and watched it as a family. Uh, so I've always watched it as a sport, and even way back when, when it was a no-holds-barred competition in the 90s, the pay-per-view, and kind of following it in different magazines, when I could find magazines, art articles on it, even going to the martial arts magazines, just kind of keeping a pulse on it. And uh, as it grew for men's MMA, um, certainly uh, took the time to travel and, and be at the live events and experience uh, those fight live. And, uh, and then I had the opportunity to actually see some women's MMA matches on Strike Force cards. My first one was the Cyber Cohen fight in Miami. Uh, and it was, a, it was a good and bad experience for me. It was an outstanding fight. I loved every minute. It was a great fight in the cage. But kind of the reception that I kind of, and the vibe I got from the audience <coughs> illustrated to me that, uh, you know, as a sport uh, and the acceptance of women may, women's MMA, it had a long way to go. And uh, I wanted to be a part of a way to bring it up, elevate it, and really show that the, the females involved are athletes first. And they step in that cage with the heart, the desire, um, and passion, just like any other fighter would. Right now, right now. Well, with um, the Women's MMA Fight Summit, you know, I want to personally thank you um, for being a big part of what happened here this weekend. It was a beautiful, magical thing, in my opinion. You know, to see all the women here from all over the country mm -hmm. to unite all over the world, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to unite and be able to share our enthusiasm for the sport and work together. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you very much for being one of the main leaders, you know, to make that possible and, and yeah, fronting things. for to, six months. Yeah, so, yeah, to, you know, to make it happen. So. Yeah, yeah. So I, where are you going to go from here? I mean, obviously that makes a big statement, you know, to me and a lot of people that... You know, Janet's here, and she's backing us in a really, really big way and, and supporting and, and promoting women and their talents. You know, where do you want to take that ultimately? Well, I, it was our pleasure to be part of the event, to sponsor the event, and I got the opportunity to come, come out and be hands-on, um, and I'm glad I did uh, because I was able to meet the female fighters. You can see them in the cage, and I had, I had some initial experience with our first uh, promotion with the female fights, but to have a group of 30 or 40 women coming together and, and realizing that they're part of a community, it really, it really was a statement to me that uh, the women out there, they want to be part of the sport, they want to be successful at it. And, and I want to take my experience and the, the connections, the networks, and the, this energy that the G2 Summit created and take it back with me, sit down with our promotion company, and figure out different events, different things that we can do to elevate women's MMA, um, elevate MMA as a sport, and really create promotions and events around uh, the fighter first. If we can elevate uh, female fighters, male fighters, their success, uh, our success as a promotion company will, will come, but what can we do to create the best events, the best environments uh, for female fighters? Um, and so that's going to be one of my number one goals, uh, to really look at 
and figure out the best way to to make that happen. Uh, you know, and what we look at when we look at fighters matchmaking, uh, particularly when women's MMA, a lot of times you'll hear that there's not depth or there's no female fighters or I can't, you know, you know, there's no good talent out there. I think that kind of falls on the promoter promoters and the matchmakers. They rely kind of just staying in the re region or staying with the, the, the training centers or the gyms they're comfortable with. And those, in, just in their own region, they may only have one or two fighters. But at Black Eye, we understand to make the best matchmaking, we're going to research fighters throughout the nation um, and fly them in, bring them in for the best possible matches. And, and, and we're, we're throwing down the gauntlet. We're challenging other promotions companies to, to kind of step in and be open and look for the female fighters. Um, not just stop at your doorstep, but there are women throughout the country. We had uh, here at the summit women from Washington, D.C., from Pennsylvania, from New Mexico, from California, from Missouri. So there are female fighters. They just might not be at your doorstep. And at Black Eye, we're willing to put in the work, the time, and, and the energy to really make the best matchmaking potential fights for women's MMA. And that's, you know, we'll, we'll travel across the nation to find the best. Uh, we had mentioned this before. We talked about um, uh, women's MMA is like a political movement. Mm -hmm. What is like your, um, I guess, what you see now? What the the, what it looks like now, mm -hmm. and and what we can do in sort of a game plan to change that. Well, I, th I think um, it's it starts with building community, and the G two event uh, for the female fighters was an excellent way to to build community. Uh, they had a chance to meet each other. They had the chance to train together from some of the best uh, talent in, in women's MMA this weekend. And and first step, when you create that community and it opens communication, um, you know, you can talk about the existing problems with someone who, who may be experiencing the same thing or at least can relate to it. Um, and once the kind of the problems are exposed, you know, we've got a community of uh, fighters sponsors, supporters, trainers that really want to combat um, some of the social stigmas that go with it, some of the political stigmas that go with women's MMA, and as a community we can we can take on those challenges. And uh, I want to be a part of that uh, to change the climate around women's MMA. Um, it can, it's been dismissed, it's been criticized, it's been sexualized, um, but what it actually is, is a community of female athletes, and, and they need to be recognized for that. Um, they're women, they're mothers, they're hard workers, uh, they're students, they're athletes, they're so multifaceted. Focus on that, and, uh, and you'll really truly see the heart and desire of women's MMA. Where I'm at today, and in my involvement with women's MMA, um, I'll contribute that to my mom. Because I grew up around wrestling, my brother wrestled, but my mom told me I couldn't wrestle. I wanted to be on the junior high wrestling team so bad. I wrestled, I, I trained with my brother, I, you know, do everything he was doing. And she said, girls don't do that. Wow. <laughs> um, so this was, you know, I'll date myself back in the 80s. <laughs> uh, growing up, 70s and 80s, I'm, I'm 42. And, and that just kind of always stuck with me. Well, you know, girls don't do that. And... Uh, you know, so raising a daughter, I didn't ever want to have her have anyone say that to her. Girls don't do that. So she's also our inspiration, too, that, uh, you know, if I can make a stand to, to say women fit in here in this environment and in this sport, um, then I can show my daughter that, you know, you can potentially do anything you want to. Um, nice. So, so I, I'll contribute it to my mom for telling me I couldn't wrestle. <laughs> Thank Marie, um, my partner Marie. She kind of helped me get make that final decision to come out and really be part of it, be hands on. Helped uh, create the avenue for me to, you know, get that last minute plane ticket. Uh, got me off the hook. She officiated the wedding I was supposed to be officiating at. So she's <laughs> my number one. Thank you. Um, and then I just just a great. Uh, support system that women's MMA has, uh, Sam Wilson, uh, Mark, and Slade, uh, Roxy, um, you know, they, they just support women's MMA in so many different ways, and, and for me to be included in that group of supporters, uh, to be welcomed into the women's MMA community, 
um, you know, just gives me a sense of belonging, a sense of community, and uh, I just want to step up to, and up to the plate and just really make a difference for everyone in the community of women's MMA. People out there say that women's MMA, oh, it's 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 dying or it needs life support. We know it's alive and it's kicking ass. <laughs>